I will uh, present uh, in uh, this uh, webinar uh, some of the newest results from Erosita with a particular focus on the energetic universe uh, and the uh, OSCAR X-ray service seen by Erosita, uh, indeed. So my first disclaimer is that uh, I will present all the selected results from this uh, very successful mission so far, but uh, you will have uh, a lot of to uh, learn also in the near future with the coming release. So let's start uh, from the, let's see if it is uh, working. Let's start from the very beginning, some uh, a very, I mean, broad uh, introduction on uh, the topic of uh, the uh, X-ray sky. So why we are interested in serving the sky and the X-rays? Well, X-rays provide uh, the unique view of the hot and energetic uh, uh, universe. This is in fact also the, line of one of the next generation X-ray satellites, uh, uh, Athena, that many of you for sure will uh, uh, know that uh, it's uh, supposed to be launched in uh, in the uh, late 30s. But uh, coming back to these two, two topics, uh, X, uh, the uh, X-ray wavelength is the best to investigate the energetic universe because X-rays are some of the most exotic and energetic events in the new universe uh, uh, itself, like, for example, accretion onto comp uh, compact stellar objects and the shock traced by supernova uh, Renmans and the supernova explosion. And among these uh, uh, exotic and energetic events, there are also the ubiquitous uh, uh, phenomena of active uh, galactic nuclei in the galactic nuclei of uh, uh, host galaxies that has been recognized as agents of feedback in the uh, past years. I will come back uh, uh, later on this. And as far as the hot universe is concerned, we know that most of the baryons are in a warm and hot X-ray emitting phase that can be uh, revealed only thanks to sensitive X-ray observation indeed. And we also know that uh, the knots of the large scale um, structure clusters of, of galaxies uh, uh, dominate and have such a bright X-ray emission that becomes easily observable and that this can provide a powerful tracer of uh, structure growth with important cosmological implications. So here I want just to stress that, that this is particularly true if for X-ray band we consider the bandwidth between 0.1 to 10 kV because at these energies both of these phenomena can be uh, traced at best. So but what we do we learn by observing this kind of sources of the class of sources in in this particular wave band? Well, in terms of energetic universe, we uh, can learn a lot in terms of particle acceleration, the mechanisms of particle acceleration, the matter under extreme condition, and also we can be able to test general uh, relativity there. And uh, uh, as uh, we'll focus a bit more, uh, because it's uh, the, the field that I'm more familiar uh, with, also we can learn a lot uh, on the formation and evolution of galaxies. And um, instead, from the study of clusters and groups and their evolution with redshift, we can, uh, of course, uh, provide uh, the better census of the matter budget in the universe. And uh, more directly than with other probes, we can also probe uh, dark matter and dark energy. So uh, um, putting, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, best uh, or high quality cosmological constraints uh, to understand uh, the evolution of the uh, universe. So all I said uh, as of now, it's particularly true when the entire sky is uh, considered or when the sky is considering its uh, uh, entirety. Here is uh, some artistic representation of uh, our, uh, let's say, uh, universe projected in the uh, galactic uh, plane where uh, we can spot the, the largest um, um, matter assembly uh, like the Virgo and the Perseus clusters and, and a couple of other big uh, clusters there. And uh, uh, the, the main uh, message uh, is that uh, uh, the, the various source population that I mentioned before and that uh, they can be easily traced with uh, X-ray service may reside both in the galactic uh, plane and uh, in this respect, uh, the population of uh, um, supernova remnants, uh, compact binaries, and of course also coronally active stars that uh, uh, also them are uh, um, expected to be bright X-ray uh, uh, emitters are mainly expected to populate the galactic uh, region of the sky, while the other two big classes of sources that uh, again I mentioned before, like the Arctic galactic nuclei and, uh, uh, and, and clusters, uh, are populating mostly the extragalactic sky. And in terms of, uh, and uh, if we just uh, um, uh, consider uh, AGN, uh, 
when uh, looked at uh, in the uh, X-ray band, uh, really the uh, AGN dominated the, all the other extragalactic population in terms of contrast of emission in that particular band. And uh, sorry, uh, and. Um, uh, instead, as mentioned uh, before, it's only when you map a large uh, fraction of the of, of a large area of the sky that you can uh, really understand and single out uh, the not and the large scale structure of the universe, including the one traced by filaments and the most massive uh, uh, halos that are traced by uh, clusters. So. This is basically a motivation of uh, uh, having a, an X-ray sky over the entire, uh, um, uh, so an X-ray survey over the entire sky. We indeed live in the year of uh, all sky surveys. Uh, the picture on the left is, uh, uh, I think, the, the, the best example uh, of uh, uh, one of the, uh, the best and the newest, I think, uh, all sky survey uh, uh, available to us, that is the Gaia. Uh, survey. And uh, uh, in this image uh, taken from data release three, there are uh, about 1.5 billion of, uh, uh, of sources and uh, less uh, numbers, uh, one or two order of uh, magnitude less uh, uh, number of sources are uh, present in uh, uh, other uh, extragalactic surveys uh, uh, that mapped the, our universe in uh, other wavelength from the UV to the infrared uh, over the entire sky or over a, um, a significant um, large area of, of the sky. Here are some examples listed uh, just to give you uh, an idea. And uh, of course, so Euclid and the LSST in the near future will revolutionize this, uh, this field. As far as we uh, go to the uh, energy of, of the EV uh, KV uh, level, so uh, we approach the, the X-ray band, instead the... the um, the number of sources and our knowledge of the uh, entire uh, sky distribution of these uh, X-ray meters is uh, uh, instead still pretty much uh, limited. The only X-ray survey that we had so far is uh, ROSAT, that is uh, um, um, unfortunately too shallow uh, to compete to the detail and the, let's say, and, and the picture that is emerging at the other wavebend. wavebend and uh, it's a sample only fluxes of the order of 10 to the minus 13 CGS, and it has in the OSCAR catalog about 100,000 uh, 100, sources. So. Um, while uh, the most powerful X-ray telescopes that are able to, uh, to go deeper uh, or two or three order of magnitude with respect to, to ROSAT have uh, uh, instead uh, too small a field of view to provide efficient and sensitive coverage of the entire sky. This is a map of all the observation performed by XMM um, uh, Newton. And uh, uh, as you can see, all the observation are, mar are marked by the red uh, spots, but there is uh, still large gap and uh, uh, more than uh, um, uh, three uh, quarters of the sky still left uh, unexplored. So this is uh, uh, this was uh, the situation until now, well, actually until a couple of uh, years ago when finally Erosita came uh, into the game. And um, so uh, this talk is uh, devoted to, uh, to Rosita. Rosita stands for Extended Rontgen Survey with an Imaging Telescope Array. It's uh, a telescope built by a consortium led by uh, MP. The PI was Peter Pedel, but recently the PI ship has been passed to uh, Andre Merlori. Erosita, as the name said, is, uh, is not a single telescope. In fact, is an array of seven telescopes with uh, associated detectors uh, that uses the technology of XMM Newton, but in terms of mirrors and uh, of uh, the detector, the PN CCDs. So uh, we uh, basically uh, base everything on the XMM heritage, but with uh, all uh, the improvement uh, needed and uh, uh, let's say developed in these uh, 20 years. The strand is con the combination of the uh, field of view that is of the order of one degree. I hope you can see my point here. And uh, the effective area that combined is compared to the one of uh, XMM. The combination of the two uh, gives basically a survey speed uh, of uh, 1000 and this figure of merit is uh, a factor of five larger than any current uh, X-ray uh, uh, telescope. That means that uh, to uh, map the same area of the sky to the same depth, uh, Erosita is five 
uh, times faster than uh, any other instrument. And this is coupled with uh, a relatively good, I would say, more than decent uh, positional accuracy of the order of uh, 18 or second, uh, 20 or second average of the, the field of view with uh, source location accuracy of the order of 3, 5 uh, or second. So, Eurosita was launched in July 2019 on a uh, spectrum around the gamma that is an, an observatory uh, uh, led by uh, our uh, Russian colleague. And uh, Eurosita is the primary instrument on this observatory. The second one is Arctic Sea, that is a, a telescope that is performing a sub in the even other part of the uh, X ray sky, but uh, at a much uh, um, lower sensitivity. And uh, uh, being uh, such a, a a proprietary uh, mission, of course, uh, and uh, a split in the German and Russian collaboration. Uh, this uh, um, basically brings to the fact that each consortium has access or will have access uh, when the survey will be finished to uh, um, uh, half sky each. This means that all the data obtained by uh, Eurozita in the uh, Eastern Galactic Hemisphere, this is the uh, galactic sky in uh, galactic coordinate belong to the, uh, our Russian colleagues uh, and to a consortium led by uh, Iki and the, all the data obtained in the western part of the, of the galactic hemisphere um, are uh, uh, analyzed and belong to a consortium led by uh, MP and the German uh, consortium. So, the other important point is that Eurosita, uh, uh, again, as uh, the name says, uh, uh, will perform a survey uh, over, over the uh, entire uh, sky. So it will scan the sky from uh, L2, uh, completing a full sky map in uh, six months. This is an animation that uh, should give an idea of how this scanning uh, uh, is. In fact, uh, the, um, the, the, the shift of uh, the, the telescope is exaggerated it's much uh, much uh, smaller and in fact uh, every um point of the sky is seen uh, six times before before going out of of the uh, of the field of view uh, this basically uh, translates to the fact that uh, after six months uh, there are region of the sky that are uh, um, uh, sampled just one time well actually uh, six times in within one day, and other region of the sky, like the one at the uh, galactic poles, that are instead observed and exposed for much, much uh, uh, longer time. So, in uh, uh, this uh, translate, uh, basically, that uh, to uh, an exposure map of the uh, entire uh, sky, that uh, the one shown here. In fact, the key feature of uh, Erosita, uh, in addition to the uh, to, to be an extragalactic or sky survey, is that it adds the time axis, so the time domain, to the imaging and spectroscopy domain that uh, uh, a typical X-ray telescope already uh, has over uh, the uh, entire sky. Uh, basically, it will provide eight independent all sky surveys. Uh, with uh, a range of exposure depending on the position on the sky uh, for, uh, for each uh, survey. And these uh, surveys are uh, called ERAS-1, ERAS-8. And of course, uh, it will also produce eight cumulative all scale surveys by stacking all together the, the photons at the, uh, at the position in the sky uh, in the four years um, uh, at the end of the four years uh, dedicated to, to the service. And these cumulative uh, OSCAI service are called ERAS column one, column eight, that uh, indicate the stacking of uh, the, all the previous uh, exposure. So the combination of area coverage and sensitivity will return another key feature of Erosita, that is the number of statistics. And so the number of sources or class of sources that will be detected at the end of, of the survey. In fact, this can be uh, this can be seen here in terms of uh, X-ray fluxes and area coverage, and the line here denotes uh, the um, in limiting fluxes uh, 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 versus area curve for the uh, final four-year service. As you can appreciate for points like source, 
the um, Erosita will be about 30 times more sensitive than uh, the current uh, Oscar survey uh, rosette, and this will be able to deliver uh, these numbers of cluster of galaxies, more than 100,000 clusters, and uh, more than 3 million AGN over the entire sky. These uh, numbers uh, have been tuned, and uh, at the same uh, time also the observational strategy, to address the two driving uh, science case of Erosita, that is cluster cosmology. So as I said before, how you uh, will uh, be able to constrain uh, cosmological uh, parameters uh, um, uh, with uh, X-ray observation and uh, the uh, AGN um, uh, um, evolution and, uh, and uh, um, AGN, for AGN science, uh, all the part of AGN and galaxy evolution, including the detection of the most luminous and rare population that are still missing, as you will see in a moment also, from current X-ray surveys. There are a bonus of uh, many other classes of sources that, are, uh, that will be detected. I won't focus uh, on this. In fact, I won't focus even on the uh, main driver of the cluster cosmology for, for Rosita, uh, I'm not probably the most relevant person to uh, speak about uh, uh, this topic, but I will concentrate, I will just give you an uh, as example of the uh, kind of uh, uh, revolution that the Rosita will bring in the field of uh, uh, AGN uh, evolution. Um, just as a background, in the past uh, Two decades, uh, there have been several breakthroughs in AGN studies and demographics, uh, thanks to the, uh, what we learned from uh, um, serendipitous and dedicated X-ray service. This, this is a compilation for sure, uh, uh, in, incomplete, just to give you uh, an idea of uh, how many topics uh, has been uh, addressed with, uh, uh, with this. And uh, uh, if we just want to focus on uh, one or, or two of these, uh, this topic, one of the main breakthrough in my view, in my personal view uh, of these uh, uh, agenda studies from X-ray service uh, has been the discovery force uh, and then the characterization with more and more details of the um, um, downsizing in AGN evolution. This has been uh, um, shown, this can be shown in these, uh, four, in these two figures. The first figure basically uh, show um, the, let's say, uh, detection of, of this, this effect from the very first serendipitous X-ray service uh, uh, with uh, Chandra and XMM. And what you see here is the space density as a function of uh, redshift for different uh, agent populations splitted in luminosity classes uh, and what uh, uh, we could probe uh, there uh, at the beginning only on the basis of a few hundreds of sources is that the less luminous uh, X-ray population at the peak of their uh, activity in at later cosmic time, so at uh, lower redshift than the most luminous X-ray population that uh, seems to have peaked uh, at higher and higher redshift. This has been confirmed uh, with the subsequent and dedicated large area extragalactic surveys that returned samples of the size of 1,000, few thousand uh, AGN. And uh, it's important because uh, basically it's the same behavior that is uh, seen also in the evolution of the star formation properties and the mass properties of the galaxy population. And uh, this uh, similar behavior has been uh, used or it's now considered one of the um, key observation that we have to uh, probe the existence of uh, uh, galaxy and AGN coevolution. And uh, Erosita will revolutionize uh, uh, this field because uh, uh, in, uh, uh, at the end of, uh, of the service, these are predictions that have been done in uh, 20, uh, 2019, uh, it will uh, uh, basically redo the same experiments with uh, uh, this time uh, two order of magnitude more uh, uh, AGN. Basically, it will be able to bring uh, the statistics we have uh, that is still limited for this kind of studies to statistics at, at, a la SDSS-like uh, samples that uh, basically uh, will mean that uh, we will be able, for example, to uh, sample the most luminous beam, that is where Erosita is, is more uh, uh, sensitive, from the seven beams uh, um, that we have uh, um, up to now in uh, redshift um, uh, to more than 20 beams with associated uh, errors uh, uh, shrinked from uh, 10, 30% to less than, than, uh, than 10%. And, um, 
uh, this means that with such a large uh, statistics, uh, we, we can also uh, split uh, the study the, uh, of the evolution of the genus in terms of the accretion properties of the gen themselves, like uh, the adding to and and, uh, and the many other. Okay. So this is what we expect at the end. I will focus here on a few selected results from what we have in end so far. Again, I will focus on the hexagalactic and gem population. And I refer to a webinar of about one year ago by Manami Sasaki on the galactic emission, the galactic sources. So this is the first X-ray map that has been delivered by Erosita. So the results of the first six months of observation performed between December 2019 and June 2020. This is basically the best and the deepest uh, image of the X-ray sky we have uh, in hand right now. And it's uh, uh, really uh, um, beautiful in, in, uh, in my view. It's color code in terms of, of the um, uh, X-ray uh, band, so bluest uh, region are the hardest, uh, mark the hardest uh, uh, X-ray emission, uh, while the red one are the softest X-ray emission. What you cannot appreciate in this image is that the, the exposure is pretty uniform uh, over uh, the at, at the on all the sky at the order of 200 seconds, and the poles reach uh, 35 kilosecond exposure. What you cannot also appreciate in, the, in this image by itself, but you can appreciate with a nice detection algorithm is that this image contains more than 1 million sources, X-ray sources by, uh, by itself. Of all the classes, many uh, of those I also already mentioned before. But probably the, the, the most striking and the most notable feature that can be appreciated in this image is this um, uh, symmetric extended uh, emission that is perpendicular to the galactic plane that is uh, extended both uh, uh, in the north and the south uh, uh, direction. This emission uh, should trace uh, uh, extended emission uh, and shocked gas in the uh, in the uh, ISM, and it's uh, even more evident and more clear when we consider uh, only when we remove all the points like uh, uh, sources uh, in the in the image, and we uh, consider only the 0.6 to 1 kV energy band. So the, the two bubbles are now uh, very, uh, very uh, clear uh, visible. So this uh, bubble uh, basically enclose the more famous uh, Fermi bubble that uh, were discovered about 10 years uh, be before uh, in the um, Fermi map at energy larger than uh, one uh, JV. And uh, uh, the uh, coincidence, the special coincidence of uh, the Fermi bubble with uh, these, uh, uh, these um, other components in, in the X-rays that are called, has been dubbed the uh, Erosita bubble, um, basically Basically, was um, the first uh, highlight uh, uh, results uh, of uh, Erosita that was published back uh, in 2020. Uh, in the um, and it's uh, so far, I think, the only results that put together the two uh, collaboration, the German and the Russian collaboration. The special coincidence and also the properties of the bubbles have been, uh, um, uh, let's say, have been interpreted as. Um, uh, um, as I said, uh, uh, past uh, uh, evidence for past activity in in uh, the uh, in our galactic uh, uh, center. The the theory is uh, uh, relatively uh, simple. Uh, the, the, there is an, an injection of uh, energy from the uh, galactic uh, center that uh, accelerates um, uh, relativistic uh, uh, electrons that uh, emit uh, by uh, inverse Compton on the uh, radiation field they, they encounter, and the same uh, uh, shock basically uh, factor shock in the, the um, uh, ISM that encounters in the, in the, in the galaxy, and uh, uh, this produced the observed X-ray emission with the, 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 the strong shock fronts that we can see in, uh, in the sharp edges of, of the bubbles. With a relatively simple calculation in terms of um, 
and some uh, relatively simple assumptions in terms of uh, uh, geometry, size, time, space, and so on and so forth, one can uh, uh, can figure out uh, that uh, the thermal energy needed to inflate these bubbles uh, is the order, uh, including the X-rays ones that are uh, times, times larger in volume than the Fermi bubble, should be of the order of three times 10 to the 56 uh, uh, erg. And this uh, can be... Um, this uh, in injection of energy uh, are most likely um, is most likely due to uh, past activity and phenomenon of uh, feedback in terms of winds or jets. There, there is uh, still uh, uh, some controversial on on this uh, on uh, uh, from our galactic centers uh, happened about a few up to a few uh, 10,000 uh, million years uh, uh, ago and of the order of 10 to the 41 erg, erg per second. So all of these uh, has, of course, profound uh, implication on structure and chemical uh, enrichment of uh, galaxy yellow and more in general uh, on um, how the, uh, all these components uh, evolve in our own galaxy, but also in other galaxies, because this, the same phenomenon, in fact, can be the uh, one of the main part of the agent feedback needed to uh, explain the properties of the galaxies we have in uh, we observe in our local universe. In fact, now hydrodynamical simulation suggests that this thermal agent feedback in the Milky Way like galaxies may result in these erosita like bubbles. Uh, in the CGM. This is the, uh, it was the bubbles, the map uh, uh, I've sh uh, shown before, and this is using the same color scheme in order to help also the high, the prediction of some uh, uh, dynamic simulation, in this case, the last CNG simulation in a paper by Pile Pichetal 2021, for which uh, you can see in all these systems that are mass uh, Milky Way like system and redshift zero, you expect the same uh, uh, the same uh, broad uh, um, uh, thermal uh, emission that can be sample only with X ray observation. And probably we Rosita can access to some of them in other systems, either individually in the very close uh, uh, in the very close universe or via stacking. But uh, coming back to, to the uh, ERAS-1 map, this is the, the, the full sky uh, with some of the key uh, sources uh, uh, labeled. And uh, as I said uh, before, uh, we have access as the German consortium only to the Western part of the galactic sky where you, you recognize some of uh, the, the, the most important famous uh, um, uh, exactly sources like the, the Magellanic Cloud, the Crab, and the Virgo Cluster, just to, to make a few examples. So as I said, each consortium is exploiting the data independently, and also each consortium tested uh, in their own alpha of the of the sky the performance of the instrument uh, in the um, uh, performance and verification phase that uh, took uh, place uh, the first three months uh, of um, of the uh, erosita mission when uh, it arrived in uh, L2 uh, right before the start of the uh, survey. So what we did as the German consortium, we uh, dedicated, we performed a dedicated pointed observation on different fields and targets in our hemisphere. This is uh, up the sky, the, the, the one uh, to which we have access. And here are the, the lot some of the survey fields or, or the fields that we targeted for this PV phase. What I want to uh, highlight here is that uh, all the data from this PV phase are public and are uh, have been distributed in the early data release of uh, Erosita that happened in uh, um, uh, July 2021. And uh, uh, there is a wealth of information if you are curious Curious, and if you are, if you have your favorite target here, uh, please go and uh, and uh, go check in the catalogs uh, and uh, in the associated science papers. There is uh, a lot of work done by the uh, entire German consortium. Uh, consortium uh, uh, members. So what I want to uh, stress here, I uh, present here, uh, are a uh, uh, few uh, results from uh, the main program, what uh, we think it's the main program of the PV phase of the German consortium. That is uh, a mini survey that is called the Rosita Final Equatorial Depth Survey, IFETS. 
And uh, as the name sa uh, says, basically this survey has been uh, um, performed and has been uh, thought to be a pathfinder for a gen, stars, and cluster studies in the Old Sky Survey. Basically, what, what we did was uh, to observe a large fraction of the sky of the order of 140 square degrees at the same depth, more or less, and with the same scanning strategy that uh, Erosdita is uh, doing for the um, for sky for your uh, uh, sky survey and uh, so far ifets is the largest deepest and contiguous x-ray survey uh, existing and can really be uh, considered an appetizer for the sky survey especially in terms of, of uh, how unique this is already and this will be to to unveil a rare source population so um, the, uh, again, also in this case, uh, all the data and the catalogs, including the multi and the redshift for all the possible classes that you may be interested in, are available uh, for, to, to the entire community. And here are the six key papers that uh, uh, detail uh, in, independently the, the different classes of, of sources, gal galaxy clusters, uh, stars, uh, AGN, point-like sources uh, as a whole, uh, who uh, which include both stars and AGN. But again, if you are uh, uh, interested to, to, to this field, to these topics, uh, please exploit this data because uh, they, uh, they are really amazing. And the other thing, is that we use the, the effects also to tune and to understand what uh, uh, will what we will release for the uh, data for, for the OSCI survey uh, data, and so basically uh, the the column in the catalogs that are uh, present in this effects catalog are the, the same that you will find in the Erosita Sky catalogs. I just want to acknowledge also the tremendous job that uh, we have done, uh, especially in the follow-up group of uh, uh, in the German consortium, and this work has been led by, by, by Mara Salvato, for the identification of these 28,000 sources that we are dealing with. That is relatively challenge, challenging given the combination of the spatial uh, resolution that uh, uh, it's uh, as I said, it's it's uh, of the order of few uh, to ten arc second, and the the depth of the catalogs available. But then, using uh, the combination of uh, all the information we had, spectroscopic uh, redshift in particular from Sloan, uh, both from Sloan, uh, including the Sloan Five release, uh, and uh, all uh, the information we can have from uh, um, the uh, available extragalactic survey or sky survey that uh, I, I mentioned before, we were able to uh, divide or to associate a classification as extragalactic, galactic, and cluster for all the source classes uh, that uh, we, we have. And uh, uh, again, this highlighted strong synergies uh, that uh, we, uh, we need uh, in order to um, build uh, reliable catalogs for source and scientific exploitation. As an example of, uh, uh, of the exploitation of these uh, catalogs, uh, well, as two examples, uh, I, I highlight here uh, two papers. The one uh, is uh, uh, the one I led in the early data release. And uh, again, uh, um, uh, the topic is uh, uh, the selection uh, of quasi in the feedback phase and how Erosita may be critical in uh, selecting this very uh, rare population. And uh, basically, what we exploited the effects multi wavelength catalog, not all the full effects catalog. In fact, we, we exploited a much smaller catalog that is the sources that are detected all in the uh, Ardix ray band. We, we adopted a, a method to isolate uh, uh, obscure and rare, and rare sources uh, that we already tested in our previous uh, 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 extragalactic survey uh, campaigns. And we isola isolate. Uh, a uh, source uh, that uh, we uh, put for forward as um, a, a prototypical uh, obscured quasars uh, in the key phase of gene feedback uh, that is affecting galaxy evolution. And in fact, uh, all our subsequent uh, observations, including deep uh, uh, imaging that revealed that this is 
this source uh, is uh, clearly an emerging uh, state. The uh, in Rosita spectrum itself that uh, uh, clearly re revealed uh, a significant absorption and the uh, X-ray type 2 nature of this uh, quasar and uh, optical spectroscopy that revealed very broad uh, O3 line. Probably you cannot appreciate in this uh, figure, but the, the line is so broad that cannot be ascribed to uh settled the gas motions in, in the galaxy that is tracer of powerful ionized outflows uh, that uh, uh is uh, uh can um, has been launched in this uh, galaxy so this this source was not uh, uh a new source by Per se, it was already known from previous works, but it was only when it was observed with Rosita for the first time, uh, and almost by by chance, because the, the arrow of the sky was uh, was uh, uh, chosen almost randomly, that it has been recognized as such important as such a prototypical uh, uh, object. So again, this highlighted the need for this uh, X-ray or sky surveys or these large area surveys that are still lacking uh, to put uh, in uh, uh, better context uh, AGN in the uh, galaxy um, uh, formation and evolution context. And uh, speaking again uh, uh, of uh, rare sources and uh, rare uh, population, another uh, rare population uh, are the X-ray selected quasar a redshift larger than 5.5. Than uh, before Erosita, there were no uh, yet blindly selected uh, uh, quasars in this uh, redshift range. There were uh, a lot of uh, sources for which uh, X-ray observation and therefore the, uh, the X-ray properties has been investigated by a dedicated follow-up. Uh, these are uh, reported in this plot where there is the X-ray luminosity versus the, the redshift. It's a zoom at, uh, at a redshift. And these uh, four sources listed here were discovered by uh, Erosita blindly from the uh, for, for, from the X-ray uh, observ uh, observation. Here you can appreciate that, of course, Erosita sampled the highest luminosity part, as uh, as uh, we uh, we have seen also also before. And again, this uh, mm, there have been a lot of studies on on these sources because they they've been mostly associated with radio loud uh, uh, objects, uh, and so the connection and the co coexistence of uh, um, uh, relativistic jets and, and uh, uh, strong uh, radio sources and strong X-ray uh, emitters uh, at the redshift. Uh, it's it 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 had it uh, had a boost in the past few few years. But most important being given that at least the two if its uh, uh, sources were uh, selected uh, blindly in a homogeneous covered uh, survey, it was possible for the first time to put in the um, black hole accretion rate versus redshift, uh, that basically it's uh, uh, a complication of the figure I, 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 I've uh, um, shown before on the uh, space density of the gen, it was possible to put for the first time a data point at a redshift larger than 5.5. And again, populating these, uh, these um, uh, plots and these uh, diagrams with uh, more and more sources will uh, help us in disentangle galaxy formation models, first uh, see the black holes, uh, and so on and so forth. All this work has been led by Julian Wolf, who just finished his PhD at uh, uh, MP. So this is what we have in hand right now. Uh, coming back to uh, to uh, ERAS-1, uh, the uh, these are some some key uh, key uh, features. The force of sky survey uh, by itself will be uh, a factor of four or five deeper than uh, than RAS. And uh, as I already said before, uh, it contains about 1.1 million sources. And just half, if we just consider half of the sky, the one that we have in hand uh, uh, right now is the German con con consortium. Uh, simply half of the sky double the number of non X-ray sources that has been detected in the past uh, six years. So the good news is that data release of uh, these uh, catalogs of the German sky only is expected this spring. And again, this will be a huge resource for the astrophysics community at large. The bottom line here is that everything is going as expected, probably even better in terms of data quality and, uh, and um, 
and uh, and and the graphs. What instead was not expected uh, at all is the twist that the mission had about one year ago, in fact, uh, 11 months actually uh, today uh, ago, as a consequence of the uh, Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine. And um, uh, in fact, immediately after, just two days after the, uh, the beginning of, of the, the war, Irosita was um, uh, put uh, in uh, place uh, into safe mode. Uh, as I said, as a response to, uh, to, to this attack. This means uh, that uh, this is the official statement that was put for, forward uh, back uh, uh, one year uh, ago from the DLR and the M MP joint statement. The instrument is paused, and uh, we hope that the circumstances will permit a return to normal operation as soon as possible. Unfortunately, as you well are aware of, uh, this is not uh, yet. Uh, happened. Uh, the only thing, a positive thing that I can report uh, is that in November 2022, uh, the German consortium test uh, for uh, health of the instruments uh, by switching on uh, again, opening it, and uh, everything is still uh, all uh, under control uh, and uh, is idle and ready to start as soon as possible. This is, uh, of course, uh, a bit uh, depressing, but uh, there is some bright uh, side. There is, uh, uh, at least for, for, for the uh, overall community, there is the this is the usual programmatic slide that we show uh, in terms uh, of uh, the development of, of, of the mission. Uh, we um, we already de uh, delivered. On the bottom line is what we uh, deliver to the community. On the uh, upper part, uh, we, it's what we have in the consortium. We already delivered the early data release. Early data release. The data release one of uh, uh, ERAS one is uh, still uh, in uh, uh, in place, uh, and it's not affected by the situation of uh, uh, the um, uh, Ukraine uh, Russian war. Of course, uh, uh, since Rosita is in safe mode, mode all uh, that is happening after uh, uh, in, in the few next years. So the data release of the uh, subsequent part of, of the survey will uh, will be will be uh, uh, needed to be uh, revisited and negotiated again also in collaboration with uh, IK. So as I said, the Rosita uh, as of today completed four uh, or sky surveys uh, and uh, a fraction of the of the uh, eras uh, uh, five and uh, uh, this is the uh, full map of the, of our hemisphere of the um, cumulative two years uh, uh, survey that is uh, uh, show even more details than the one of eras one that I've shown before. And of course, uh, even with uh, these uh, limited um, data sets, even uh, if uh, EOSITA is basically one year that is not taken data, the exploration, the exploitation of what we have in hand in terms of the uh, ERAS uh, uh, surveys is still uh, uh, amazing. And uh, uh, just a comparison of uh, uh, the second, third, uh, and fourth survey with the, with the first one and uh, with each other and with the archival data already uh, helped uh, a lot uh, and brought uh, significant uh, uh, discoveries, uh, discoveries uh, especially in, ter in terms of nuclear transients, uh, including uh, TD candidates, uh, quasi-periodic uh, eruptions uh, um, that led to a nature paper uh, uh, led by um, Ricardo uh, Arcodia and a plethora of galactic uh, sources, uh, including the first uh, ever Nova Fireball, again, uh, which... Uh, uh, went into a nature paper, in this case, uh, laid by, uh, led by Koenig et al. So there is uh, really a treasure, there is uh, a treasure hunt in, this, uh, in these catalogs, and the entire consortium, uh, German consortium, uh, is uh, looking, uh, uh, I mean, uh, endlessly on uh, exploiting these, these uh, data sets. So again, stay tuned with many other nice results that are coming in the few uh, months. So in the last two minutes, three minutes, I just want to give a, a few words of possible synergies with uh, CTAO. Uh, I'm not involved in, in, in the project, so I just uh, put a few consideration I, I may add in, in mind. Uh, from material that I have uh, found in the public uh, websites. I don't 
no time to explain explain what is uh, uh, city uh, AO. The, the first uh, the first uh, message I want to to make is given the uh, Russian German split of uh, Erosita, probably city AO south. So the the southern part, the southern array is. Uh, 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 is the best matched with the Erodita German sky. This is the, the, the split in equatorial coordinate. So the western part in galactic coordinate, basically it's the southern, the southern uh, uh, sky. And uh, uh, the other uh, bottom line I want to say is that, that uh, the start of CTAO, if it is still uh, at uh, the uh, at full operation, if it is uh, at around 2025, I don't know, <laughs> you, you may correct me, uh, all the ERAS uh, catalogs will be uh, already uh, public, so they can be exploited immediately uh, by the uh, CTAO community. There is also the possibility for a memorandum of understanding uh, with uh, uh, Erosita. Uh, Erosita just uh, signed uh, uh, such a memorandum of understanding with uh, uh, LASO, for example, and this may be very uh, very helpful or important uh, if uh, uh, one wants to uh, exploit also some other uh, key um, um, products of the uh, Erosita German uh, collaborator. And uh, you are invited to contact Andrea Merloni if you are interested in this kind of uh, um, uh, synergies and collaboration. Uh, I, I, again, searching a bit in, in the literature here and there. Have still a few minutes, Marcello. Yeah. In two minutes, I, I think I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, 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 Again, uh, looking a bit in the literature here and there, I uh, came out with this, uh, uh, I learned that it's called Kifune Plot uh, by Frank et al. 2012. Here, uh, it basically, it shows you the uh, number of sources detected as a function of, of, uh, of year for different uh, high energy band. Here, there was a Chandra and uh, XMM at that time. Erosita already in 2021 uh, surpassed then 1 million, and it will be uh, to three, four million in, uh, uh, in 2025 or, or so. That means that uh, Erosita can provide position at five, ten or second level, identification spectral properties of few million of sources. And I bet that uh, among these few million of sources, basically there will be all uh, the sources that uh, will be detected at a uh, few minute level on uh, from, from the CTA uh, experiments. Again, uh, that will be of the order of 1,000 sources. Again, if this um, number uh, of sources in this plot is, uh, is correct. And uh, uh, similarly, this is an old figure of the uh, sensitivity versus energy for different uh, energy band. Here, Chanda was reported. I put uh, uh, Erosita and, uh, as, as, a, as a comparison, and there is the sensitivity of, uh, of CTA. And uh, uh, the strength of Erosita with respect to Chanda is that this is uh, to the uh, entire sky. And uh, as I said before, the catalog will be already, already and released uh, when uh, the CTAO full operation will uh, uh, will uh, start, and of course uh, uh, it's quite obvious. But uh, uh, identification is also understanding of the, the the sources. This is an example of one of the higher redshift uh, blazar uh, detected uh, uh, by at very high uh, energy. I don't know if it is still the, the highest redshift one, and I liked it because it, the flux was reported. And it, as you can see here in the X-ray band, uh, the flux was of the order of 10 to the minus 12, and the rosita will be down 10 to the minus 14. So it's clearly uh, be able to provide us excellent spectra uh, in case. And um, I leave here with the with the final uh, slide, uh, maybe the, the point uh, is a bit obvious, but uh, the uh, the synergy for CTO and uh, Erosita is that Erosita may be uh, crucial for identification and characterization of the uh, TV sources. The X-ray sample by Erosita is the closest band with minimum contamination from background sources and good position sensitivity for the uh, reliable identification. As I said, the identification is understanding and also the process is mapped uh, pretty well uh, uh, each other. So 
uh, yes, I live here with my uh, uh, conclusion. And uh, uh, the bottom line is that really, if it's uh, that uh, thanks to the, its large grasp of stable background and observed cadence, is it really opens up a new parameter space for X ray astronomy across different source classes. We demonstrated that the survey design uh, can be met. There will be a huge data release uh, in uh, spring 2023, so stay tuned about that. And uh, we are uh, uh, happy to provide this unique uh, legacy data set that would be very um, uh, important and crucial for the identification and characterization of various energy sources. Okay, thanks a lot.